After watching the Borg Queen begin assimilating her new army in the recent Star Trek Picard series, it got us thinking about viruses. No, being assimilated by nanoprobes isn't a virus, but it sure acts like one. They take over the blood cell functions. Like a virus. The horror at the thought of being assimilated by virus-like nanoprobes got us thinking about the viruses in our favorite science fiction TV shows that would even make Worf nervous. With all due respect, sir. After taking a deeper look, we found a few that may have killed billions. From Star Trek to Battlestar Galactica and Stargate to Firefly, these are the top five TV viruses that make our skin crawl. Let's be grateful they exist somewhere in the future, in another reality, or on the other side of the universe. You don't want to miss this episode. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now. And give us a thumbs up if you want more news about your favorite shows. Also, click the notification bell to never miss an episode. And make sure you stay tuned to the end to see how to get this awesome Firefly I Aim to Misbehave inspired graphic design from the amazing artists at MixTease.com. Science fiction writers just love to bust out a good virus when looking for new ways to punish the worlds they create. Let's face it, you rarely have good science fiction without teetering on the brink of some new dystopian future. So here are five viruses that we are glad are science fiction instead of science fact. And make sure you stick around to the end to see if our number one gives you the same heebie-jeebies it gave us. Number five. The Star Trek Klingon Augment Virus What could be worse than getting killed by an out-of-control virus? How about being turned into a monster by one? Think of those poor Klingons being horribly transformed into hideous-looking humans. Put it on, viewer. It's working. Let me see. Human females are so repulsive. Mm -hmm. For this to properly terrify you, you need to imagine that this virus turns you into a Klingon and you'll be forced to eat ga for the rest of your life. Yuck. But if you were a Klingon in 2154, this was no laughing matter. The Augment virus spread quickly, infecting millions, and threatened to wipe out the Klingon race completely. My Tog won't even recognize me. While most viruses are totally unavoidable as a result of natural evolution or chomping on a tasty bat, the Klingons could have totally avoided the plague that nearly wiped out their civilization. Oh my. After human augments easily took over a bird of prey, the batleth wielding warriors decided to bioengineer their own enhanced warriors using DNA from genetically modified human embryos left over from Earth's eugenic wars. Little did our Kalis loving empire realize, a small side effect of their creation would be a loss of their forehead ridges and alterations to their personalities. They are Klingons, and it is a long story. Some kind of genetic engineering? A viral mutation? Would you not discuss it with outsiders? Yes, the Klingon test subjects did develop enhanced strength and intelligence, but they were also starting to look like humans. And if that wasn't terrifying enough, the test subjects started dying agonizing deaths when the foreign DNA created a neural system breakdown. And while this sounds bad, up to this point, it was still a controlled experiment unaffecting the rest of the Empire. But then Klingon researchers enhanced a test subject who was unknowingly infected with the Lavodian flu. And as we all know, that pesky flu virus can have a mind of its own. During the augmentation process, the flu merged with the augment DNA, and the carefully controlled experiment turned into an epidemic. And like any reasonable government that realizes they can't stop the pandemic, the Klingon Empire launched into a sterilization program to destroy all of their infected planets. I bet you're glad you aren't a Klingon right now. Luckily, Starfleet intervened, a cure was found and distributed throughout the Empire, resulting in millions of disfigured Klingons. Better than death, right? Either death or dishonor will visit us this day. Number four. Stargate's Ori Virus. It's one thing for a person looking for answers to get tricked into joining a cult. Again. Seth, Seth is life. Seth, Seth is happiness. happiness. Seth, Seth is, is all life. But what happens when the cult comes looking for you? That's exactly what happened to the residents of PBX 412, who were just the latest target of a malevolent race of aliens called the Ori. But the Ori weren't satisfied with getting everyone to drink the Kool-Aid. Their victims had to want to drink the Kool-Aid. 
the method of delivery? A messenger called a prior, who brought with them the teachings of origin and something that makes smallpox look, well, small. Residents of the planets the prior visited would fall victim to the powerful effects of a plague that had all the symptoms of a super flu virus. The message from the Ori was clear. If every man, woman, and child didn't bow down and accept origin as their new religion, the consequences would be the death of the entire population. And people thought Catholics in the New World were pushy. Needless to say, the method was effective. The priors conquered world after world for the Ori. That is, until they got to Earth. Daniel Jackson to the rescue? Not this time. With the help of a few awesome aliens, including our favorite Jaffa Teal'c, and the knowledge of the ancients, the plague was stopped and Earth protected. And what does any disease-wielding, religion-thumping messenger do when his biological weapon no longer works? That's right, he takes his alien Bible and goes home. Thank you for your sacrifice, Louis Gossett Jr. Jaffa! Hey, what? What? <laughs> you heard me! Jaffa Cree! Number 3. Battlestar Galactica's Cylon Virus Why can't artificial intelligence and humans get along? Is it like kids who have to prove to their parents that they are better than them or what? When it comes to galactic space invaders, it's usually us humans shoving a virus where the alien sun doesn't shine. Isn't that right, Jeff Goldblum? Good night. Well, in the case of Battlestar Galactica 2004 to 2009, it's humans who have to worry about a virus, and not the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, aching, coughing, and stuffy head fever sort of virus either. This is a machine virus, and it comes courtesy of the cybernetic lifeform nodes humans created. Of course, you know them as Cylons. Imagine being home right now, and the only thing keeping you from being attacked by cybernetic soldiers is that your computer isn't connected to the internet. And as soon as you connect to the web and click on your favorite podcast video, those cybernetic creations will hit you with a virus, shut down your defenses, and attack. Yikes, no internet. No wonder Commander Adama is always so grumpy. Because the toasters and skin jobs computing and robotics technologies are far superior to their creators, their use of viruses to shut down the colonial defense mainframe nearly results in the extinction of humankind. And what causes the single-minded, sentient artificial intelligence to want to exterminate the human race? Apparently religion. God, are you God? Possible. Sometime after becoming self-aware, the Cylons developed a religion that considered humans to be sinful and flawed creations who don't deserve to survive. But Cylons and other artificial intelligence will learn quickly that karma is a real thing when they become infected with an encephalitis virus that is no longer lethal to humans. And while neither the humans nor the Cylons seem to be able to finish one another off, as we all know, they would eventually find their way to a mostly non-lethal, virus-free conclusion. Are you alive? Number two, Firefly Serenity's Pax Virus. Would a government release a virus into a populace in an attempt to control them? Let's consider that a rhetorical question. And when I realized that the laboratory was having the same name. But for the citizens under the control of their inner planetary alliance, being controlled is only the beginning. While it was our goal to only cover viruses from science fiction TV shows, we decided Serenity was basically a movie-based version of the only season of Firefly. And since the show was stupidly canceled after only one season in 2003, I'm trash. And fans got the short end of the stick. Firefly is worth breaking the rules for. And the PAX virus they had to endure? Well, let's just say we hope our future Disney overlords don't get any crazy ideas. Who here thought they had permission? to say anything critical of Chinese politics. With the Alliance's desire to control the entire solar system, their effective control measures became extreme and cruel. Whether trying to turn children into weapons against their enemies, or psychologically reprogramming people in an effort to control them better, the Alliance will stop at nothing for total domination. But what they did on the planet of Miranda was over the top. The Alliance was so horrified by what they'd done, they tried to hide the planet to cover up the horror. 
the crew of the Serenity were able to follow clues to find the planet that was now considered fictional to most citizens. They learned that the Alliance had added an experimental chemical compound to the air processors on Miranda. This G23 Paxilon hydrochlorate was intended to calm the population of the planet and remove aggression to make them easier to control. And it worked, but it worked too well. 99.9% .9 of the population became so lethargic, they stopped working, talking, and eventually moving. Sort of like Brian after a large pepperoni pizza. <laughs> I'm in danger! But on Miranda, they stopped moving for so long, they just laid there and allowed themselves to die. The remaining 0.1% of the 30 million people on the planet had the opposite reaction to the Pax virus. They became mindlessly violent and extremely aggressive. These animalistic humans became known as Reavers, and they lived on the fringes of civilized space looking for humans to rape, torture, kill, and eat. Oh, wow. Although it cost them dearly, the Serenity crew would eventually broadcast the truth to everyone in the solar system, uncovering the Alliance's horrific experiment. Take that, Alliance, and Firefly, keep flying. I'm a leaf on the wind. Watch how I soar. Drum roll, please. And the number one scariest sci-fi virus is the Star Trek Borg nanoprobe virus. The Borg are fascinating, complicated, and terrifying all by themselves. But when you give them an assimilation virus that could turn half of a planet into drones before anyone realized what was happening, well, that's next level scary. The nanoprobe virus was created by the Borg Queen in 2375 as a way to gradually assimilate the human race after failing to do it directly twice. Her plan would be to detonate a biogenic charge in Earth's atmosphere and let the virus infect everyone on the planet without putting up a fight. But first she would need the help of our favorite Borg Seven of Nine, whom the Borg Queen captured during the Star Trek Voyager episode Dark Frontier. Planetary virus aside, as we said in the beginning, Borg assimilation already has a very virus feel to it. Once the nanoprobes get inside of you, they infect your entire body and black webs sprout under your skin. The nanoprobes then create implants in your body and link your mind to the hive and you fall under the collective's control. We won't even go into amputating limbs, a painful eyepiece, or the fact that you are going to lose all of your hair. Yeah, you save money on haircuts and you don't have to think for yourself anymore, which is sometimes nice. It is awesome. But that's not a fair trade for being turned into a techno space zombie. In the end, Seven of Nine refused to help the Queen prepare the nanoprobe virus to target humanity. Her decision not only saved humanity, but solidified her choice to remain an individual and say goodbye to the collective forever. Star Trek fans say thank you. So what do you think of our top five science fiction viruses? Can you think of some others we missed? Which one is your favorite? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Also, check out this incredible Firefly I Aim to Misbehave inspired graphic design from the amazing artists at Mixtees.com. Get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below. I aim to misbehave.